Okay, hi guys, and welcome to today's show. Today, I'm gonna to be discussing the five greatest iconic watches you can buy for around about the $500 mark, give or take uh, a tiny bit, but anyway, around $500. Now, just because you don't have thousands upon thousands to spend on a watch does not mean you cannot add uh, an important iconic watch to your collection. So today, I thought, well, considering I have the five I wanna talk about, all together in one place uh, because I recently reviewed a couple of them I thought I should really do this video and it's a price range you guys tend to request a hell of a lot and of course before I get into this video I've got to do a quick wristwatch check I am indeed wearing the little flighty uh, it's actually the Flightmaster SNA 411 from Seiko a great aviation watch very modestly sized with a ton of features I adore this watch. I haven't worn it for absolutely donkeys, but I thought I'd put it back into rotation. Just adore this watch. Uh, hard as nails, uh, a really great, robust um, tool watch. Um, so I thought I'd enjoy it today. Anyway, guys, wristwatch check done. Let's roll the intro and get into today's video. So uh, let's get the most obvious icon out of the way and it's got to be of course the Seiko SKX. Now I own the Seiko SKX 013 which is the mid-size version, I've also owned the 007 which is the black dial and bezel and of course the Pepsi which is the 009. The 009 and the 007 are 42 millimeters, they wear like 40 millimeters watches but these are the best automatic dive watches in their price range without a doubt. They are true icons, true classics. Now they were released in 1996 but to be honest they have a lineage and history that goes way back to the early days of Seiko making dive watches and that is of course the mid 60s. The 7S26 uh, comes from the 7000 series of movements uh, which have been known to go, you know, 15 years without a service. Extremely robust movements. Yeah, a little bit dated by today's standards without the hacking and manual wind, but they are great all the same. We have the day-day complication, of course. Beautiful Seiko loom, so really, really legible. 200 meters water resistance. ISO uh, certified divers. They're respected by divers and watch uh, connoisseurs alike, infinitely moddable. They have their own distinct style, that curvaceous cushion case, of course the hukusei wave on the back, a little nod to Japanese art and culture which is a really nice touch. Confirmed or baptized so to speak as icons in pop culture, popping up in movies like All Is Lost. Anyway guys I'm not gonna rabbit on about the SKX uh, because you guys know I'm a massive massive fan. There's even a myth going around that you have to own an SKX to join the Urban Gentry Facebook group. It's not true. <laughs> I mean that would be kind of cool but uh, no it's not true. Uh, it's just a very very popular watch and uh, it's become an icon. Not only because of its unique design but also because it's just a fantastic watch for the money. Okay, so number four has got to be the Max Bill watch from Junghans. Now Junghans is Germany's largest watchmaker. They've been going since 1861. Uh, but Max Bill is the, their most well-known watch. Made in Germany, the Max Bill watch has kind of become very underappreciated. Because of its understated minimalist Bauhaus design, it's kind of forgotten about. And it's sad because so many watch companies, so many brands, even prestigious brands, uh, even fashion watches have ripped off the design uh, to such an extent it's it's just kind of got lost in the crowd. What makes this watch important is it was developed in 1961 in collaboration with Max Bill, the Swiss artist, architect, uh, polymath, uh, just general genius and design um, legend that is Max Bill. It was designed in collaboration with the artist himself so it's hugely important and significant. Max Bill of course went to the actual Bauhaus school 
Um, so it's genuine Bauhaus. It's not an imitation or just made in Bauhaus style as so many watches are. And it is without a doubt the most influential German watch design of all time. And I've done a whole video, I'll, I'll add cards to the videos as I go through this. I did it only last week. The automatic version that I reviewed retails about a thousand dollars. You can pick it up in sales for about 650. However, the sweet spot is the quartz and manual wind versions. Both of those you can pick up on the used market for well under $500 uh, and possibly new for just under $600. So those are my recommendations. Beautiful, understated. They're watches that portray uh, sophistication. If I see a person wearing a Max Bill, you know that they're cultured, you know they appreciate fine art and design and architecture. Uh, that's something that a watch very rarely does and, and that's make the wearer look, well, more cool and more cultured. Uh, how many watches can you say do that? It's just a shame that its design uh, has been homaged and ripped off to such an extent that people have forgotten that the Max Bill was the original. So anyway, I'm going to try and bring it back and, and give it the respect it deserves. So it's not really about horology, it's more about design, the Max Bill, because the movement, in keeping with uh, Bauhaus ideology, needs to be more utilitarian, needs to, it can't be decorated. Bauhaus is all about form and function, and the watch certainly does it. Uh, better than any any other watch in my opinion and the great thing is about minimalist designs like that is that they are classic and timeless uh, it will never go out of fashion it will always look good its proportions every little detail is just perfection okay moving on to another um, iconic design and that is of course the Seiko Giugiaro the Ripley as worn by Sigourney Weaver now this watch came out originally in 1983 now this was a, a collaboration between Seiko and the legendary Italian car designer but it didn't really uh, take off until it was featured in the Aliens movie cast by James Cameron, the, the director, he's a big watch guy. He's done collaborations himself with Rolex. Uh, so you know he's a watch guy. It was a beautiful casting. It, it suited the industrial aesthetic of the film perfectly. Although the watch is actually a racing inspired watch. This is a quartz chronograph, 100 meters uh, water resistant and has recently been reissued back in 2015. I managed to pick one up. Uh, for a remarkable only $300. Now they are limited editions. Price is creeping up. If you're lucky, you can pick one up for under 500, especially on the used market. And I think they're gonna go up in value because there's not really that many of them. I got this SCED035. You can still get the Bishop version, which is the PVD or black. Uh, worn by the character Bishop in the movie, and that is the SCED037. Not so much of an icon, but it, I think it will also go up in value because it is in limited amount and it's just so cool. Inside we have the Seiko 7T12 quartz movement, 100 meters uh, water resistant. Now, out of all the watches we've discussed so far, this has the most Marmite effect. You either really love it or, or loathe it. It's very 80s in its styling, the salmon pink hands, the little yellow details in the dial, this kind of strange asymmetrical shape to it with the, the pusher structure on the side of it. I think it's really, really cool. Other people don't like it at all, and I completely understand that. However, we have to put it in this list uh, simply because of its pop uh, culture um, uh, impact and also the fact it's designed by Giugiaro. It's just an unbelievably cool uh, watch for the money. Okay, so the Seiko Giugiaro was my third choice. What is number two in the list? Well, it's got to be a Casio and the most successful Casio of all time and that is the F91W. Uh, it has a bit of a dark history which I discussed in the video. I'll add a link to my review of it. So it does have a, a dark side to it as well. Quite a fascinating story. Uh, but anyway, as a watch, it's, uh, well, one of the most affordable watches you can buy. It's a digital watch, of course. We have a stopwatch. I think it has a 59 hour, 59 minute, 59 second stopwatch, alarm, backlight. 
uh, what else? Its accuracy is uh, plus minus 30 seconds a month. The day date complication, of course. It's fantastic 80s retro style that I think is just timeless and only cost a measly $10. Now, there are even fake uh, F91Ws out there, so make sure you get the real one. And it runs on a little three volt button battery. Uh, and that lasts for a staggering seven years. And I love these watches. I've, I've put mine on a NATO strap. You just take off the little plastic uh, uh, strap and you put it on a NATO. Fantastic fun. It reminds me of childhood. I had one in childhood. And I, I thought I was the coolest kid in class, but it is an icon. Okay, so that was number two. What is my number one? Well, it's got to be the Belova Accutron Space View, uh, mainly because of its significance horologically with, of course, tuning fork technology, uh, which is a precursor to quartz. Uh, so we're talking early 60s. In fact, the CIA made Belova delay its release because they were using that tuning fork technology in spy satellites. They didn't want people to get their hands on it. And it was used by NASA in countless uh, space missions. It is a real part of American horological history that was made and developed in America. And for that reason, it's my number one. So it's battery powered. Because of that tuning fork technology, it has a beautiful smooth sweep to it and its accuracy is unbeatable. Uh, it blows anything mechanical out of the water. Now, uh, I recently bought one, I added mine to the collection. If you wanna go all entirely original, obviously because they're from the 60s, they're gonna be very, very used, um, beaten up and the rest of it. I actually went for what's called a conversion, which is basically a restoration made from uh, NSO parts, new old stock parts. The watch purists kind of look down on it a little bit, but I actually think it's a great way. Uh, it's the best 300 bucks I ever spent because you're getting a real piece of horological history and technology uh, in the collection for what, $300? That's how much I paid for mine. And it's in an immaculate condition. I just adore it. Really, really great buy. I love its kind of forbidden planet, uh, sci-fi looking aesthetic. It's just unbelievably cool. Now they are a bit smaller because they're from the 60s. So mine is 34 millimeters. Um, so it's not gonna be suited to everybody's wrists. However, there is newer uh, Actron watches and you can pick up some bargains on the used market. So mine uh, runs on the 214 movement, which is pretty much the uh, the most famous of the Actron movements. You have to be a bit careful when buying these because you have to make sure that the watchmaker or the restorer uh, of these vintage uh, space views knows what they're doing. Uh, so check out my video I made about mine. I was very fortunate enough to find a very talented and uh, reputable uh, watchmaker that restores them to a beautiful quality. And he has a store on eBay. Definitely, in terms of its design and its uh, horological significance, it is unbeatable. Okay, so that was my top five. Now a few honorable mentions. I'd love to add the Seiko Monster to the list. Although, is it an icon? Uh, it's very much up for debate, but I think it's bold, brutalist aesthetic is so unique and so different. It's a design that really stands out on its own. And of course, the beautiful thing is, it's an automatic diver a, a watch from Seiko, of course, but the newer versions have the upgraded movement, which I just think is fantastic. Next, we should mention the Vostok Amphibia. This is a Russian-made diver, infinitely moddable, with a really rich, long history to it. Very indicative of the Cold War. Retro, distinct, definitely has a charm and a style all of its own. Uh, also, we mentioned Casio, but I think a watch that definitely should have a, an honorable mention is the Casio Calculator watch. Now, I remember back in school, I, I, I wanted one of these so bad. And it's become very much uh, adopted by hipsters. Uh, we, of course, saw it in Breaking Bad. Uh, Heisenberg or Walter White famously wore one. Very, very cool and definitely worth a mention. It's fun, it's affordable. 
great watch. Okay, and lastly, I'd have to mention the Citizen NY0040, uh, the Promaster. This is an automatic diver, famously issued to the Marina Militare, the Italian Navy. Again, very distinctive and unique style. This came out a year after the SKX and, and really has been the SKX's greatest rival. It was first released in 1997 and has become a kind of cult watch in its own right. Uh, ISO certified of course, 200 meters water resistant, uh, respected by divers, also Japanese made, uh, but definitely overshadowed by the, uh, the SKX uh, and all its glory. Okay guys, so I'm gonna wrap it up there. Uh, so that was my top five most iconic watches under or around $500 and a few honorable mentions as well worthy to check out. Please do nominate yours down in the comments. Let's try and help as many people as we can. Thoughts, queries, opinions, questions, all the rest of it, please down in the comments below. I really appreciate your feedback. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.